Welcome to Fayetteville Community Church. We welcome our church family and our visiting friends. Thank you for coming to worship with us. To find out more about our church, upcoming events, and other church activities, you may visit us online at www.fccnc.us. If you got good enough notes, anybody can preach them, right? <laughs> uh, no, I have wanted to do this because uh, this is Father's Day, and uh, the Lord just gave me one word, and it's called blessing. Today is a day of blessing. Amen? Amen. I'm going to start in Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 through 20. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, now that's Jerusalem, if your Bible don't say that, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him. Now this is talking about Abraham. And he said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Now he's blessing the man Abraham. He is the high priest out of Jerusalem. And he, ble and he said, And blessed be the Most High God. Can't we say that? Give him praise and worship because he is who he is. Which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he... Abram gave him tithes of all. So this was a high priest, and so his tithes went to the high priest. God one day dropped into mine and Ken's heart that we were going to speak blessing into God's people. He began to show us in the word that he had always planned that the people that he had brought into the kingdom of God would thrive on the blessing, that they would grow in the blessing, and that the priest or the leaders were responsible for imparting the blessing for those that are under their oversight. Whether it was for the priest of a household or a pastor or the priest of a congregation, they are responsible for speaking life into people. Whether you're the, the father in your home, what position you have, you are responsible for putting a blessing upon the people that you are responsible for. The Lord began to show us that he was going to take care of his work, the church, out of the blessing and the prosperity that we would choose to speak into his people. That was something new for us because we had always been an established church and paid a salary, and we looked to the church to provide our needs. But God said, we're going to do this in a different way. He said, go in reverse, and through the word of God, you're going to speak life into people, and because you speak life into people, I am going to bless them. We're going to turn their lives around. They will begin to prosper, and they will begin to succeed. And out of their success and prosperity, I will build my church financially. Now, God has always been proven faithful in that area, absolutely faithful. We've never had to have yard sales, bake sales, barbecue sales, or anything like that, and God has just blessed this church because you are a blessing to us, and thankfully we are a blessing to you. The Bible says that if you have a good leader, you are a blessed people. Now, I'm not bragging on us, but, but you know what? God loves faithfulness. And, and in August, we will have been at Fayetteville Community Church for 45 years. We looked a lot different. We were just in our 30s when, when Fayetteville Community Church started. So it, it's been a blessing for 45 years. And God has proven himself faithful. God has shown us that we are responsible for speaking life into people. 
and we're, we're responsible for encouraging people. If I want life out of my children, then I've got to put life into them. Amen? If I want life and response out of my husband, then I have to speak life into him. I don't say derogatory things about my husband. And he reciprocates. He don't say bad things about me. So we, that's what we've always done is bless each other. I am blessed according to what I impart in him. If we want life in people, then we've got to put life into them. So that is what we have chosen to do. We said, Lord, you send the people and we will impart the word and we will bring life to them. You're not re here in this church by accident. God has sent you this way. 1 Peter 3, verses 8 and 9, it says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be, be pitiful and be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that you should inherit a blessing. And then in Psalms 34, 13 through 19, and 1 Peter 3, 10 and, and, and 13, it says the same thing. I've put both scriptures here. Let him who means to love life and see good days refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile and t let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. How many of you know you have to pursue peace? You could be hateful any time of day, but you, but you have to pursue peace. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears attend to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, and, he, and who is there to harm you if you prove zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. And do not fear their intimidation, and do not be troubled. We've learned over the years that people are people. You know, if we change churches, we would not change anything but people. Because wherever we go, people are people. Amen? We have an office in the pastorate that we're supposed to fulfill and is one that goes all the way back to the relationship that God had not first with Moses and Aaron, but even before that, that God had with Melchizedek and Abraham. Now, what Abram was out doing was fighting, and, and the Lord was with him. And so Abraham brings back the spoil to where he is living, and on his way back, he meets this priest, Melchizedek. And the Bible says that he blessed Melchizedek with the 10% the of the spoil, and Melchizedek turned around and blessed him because God instituted the plan, he instituted the plan of imparting the blessing to those that you are responsible for. It's not just our job, it's your job to bless people also. But if you go all the way back to Genesis in the garden, God blessed Adam and Eve. Amen. He said, God blessed them and said, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, folks, this was before Adam and Eve sinned. They were to work. Work is not a curse. Work is a blessing. So God told them to work even before they went into sin. He just said, after they sinned, it's going to be harder on you to make a living than it was when you were being blessed by God. The first act that he performed in Genesis after he brought them forth was that he blessed them. They would not have been able to have been fruitful if God had not said it. But because God said it, it took place. They, Adam and Eve, 
were able then to begin to re reproduce and to bring forth life. When Moses knew that his time was about up, he called all the 12 tri tribes of Israel and he put each one of those men before him and he imparted a blessing. That blessing then caused them to be able to continue to perpetuate the blessings of God upon their lives and to impart blessings to other people. And then in Matthew chapter 5, our Lord, he carried that tradition on himself. He begins the Sermon on the Mount with a series of blessings. The Beatitudes are a set of blessings. Amen? In the Beatitudes, you will discover that everything that the disciples ever experienced all the way from the new birth experience to the infilling of the Holy Spirit and even to the strength and the power to suffer under persecution was expressed in the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ before it ever took place. He put a blessing on those men, not just one time, but over and over. In chapter 5 of Matthew uh, he, Jesus was able to say to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. They didn't look like they were the salt of the earth. If you'd looked at those men, you would have seen that some of them were uneducated, untrained, awkward in the ways of God. They didn't understand the kingdom of God and how it operated they didn't even fu understand fully at that time who Jesus was. But they were go going to grow in that awareness and understanding because Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You speak what you want, not what you've got. Because he said to them, you are the light of the world, they could become the light of the world. What he said to his disciples was, now look, men, you're not anything at this time. You're a bunch of failures, and unless you listen to me, you're not going to succeed. You're going to have to hang close to me, and one of these days I will tell you that you can work and where you can function. But the disciples would never have achieved it. They could not because he would not have said that it was going to take place. Amen? Uh, as I was studying this, uh, I got sort of amused at, at, as I went back and studied in the book of Genesis. And uh, what, was so, what is so interesting is in the book of Genesis, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And it's gone on and on and on and on and on for thousands of years because he said, let there be light. Because what God says happens. Amen. And what you say as an individual, as the head of your household, that same thing works from your mouth. Now, if we stand before people and if we have that attitude within ourselves that our people are not responsive, that they, they don't, they're not open to what the Lord wants, they're not going to become responsive. They are going to be open to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We as Christians, are responsible to bless those that Jesus has given to us to be over. Amen? My children, they must hear what I say. Wesley and Barron have never heard Ken or me say anything negative over their lives. When they chose what they chose, we prayed for them and said, Lord, you take care of wherever their feet go. They must hear what I have to say because I was one of their parents. It's more important if you've got small children for you to be a father or a mother than for you to have a buddy, right? Because our children have plenty of buddies. But we need to say to them, I am going to impart a blessing over your life. You are going to succeed. I'm going to speak to you, so tell me what you want so I can bless what you want. 
Listen, the Bible is full of blessings, but probably the one for the Jews that's the most outstanding is in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. And this is Aaron, the high priest, speaking. And this is what God told Ab uh, to Moses and to Aaron, that they were to speak a blessing over those people. And I would like for each one of you to memorize this and say it over your children, put it on your back door, and know that what is in this, this is a great blessing, folks. He said, and the Lord said unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, who was the high priest, and unto his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. And then it says, And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. How many of you know to this day the country of Israel is blessed? It's a perpetual thing, Scott. And no matter what the leaders of our nation or the leaders of the world want, we cannot give up blessing Israel. That's why we're blessed, folks. That's why we, we have enough uh, goods that, we've, that we farm that we can feed the whole world. The greatest blessing you will ever speak over anyone is this, the Lord bless thee. The Jewish people have been saying that to their children and their children's children all the way down. That's why that is so easy for a Jewish boy or a Jewish, Jewish girl with any initiative at all to succeed. They have never stopped invoking the blessing of God over their children. You hear a lot of uh, jokes about how easy it is for a Jew to make a dollar. Well, no wonder we in the Christian faith have dropped the blessing and instead of continuing to impart it over the people, we choose criticism instead of the blessing. You never establish a blessing in the negative. A blessing is always in the positive. Amen? Now, uh, children can continually in a state of con live in a state of con condemnation from their fathers and mothers. If you call them not head, dumbbell, stupid idiot, and tell, their, tell them they're never going to change unless they change their ways, then they're constantly under judgment. No matter what they do, their father and their mother always find something wrong with them. They will turn out exactly like you speak because they will have a curse over their life. They will not be able to succeed in life like you want them to and like the Lord wants them to. They will never be able to, to succeed professionally, nor will they be successful in their social life or their domestic life. They will live under a curse. But the good news is that a curse can be broken. Amen? A curse can be broken. God plans that a blessing will be spoken over his people for us to impart the best to them day after day. God said, you speak a blessing and you invoke my name on the sons of Israel. We bless our children in whose name? Jesus. We bless our children in the name of Jesus. When you practice a blessing in your life, your children will be blessed. So you need to start, if you don't do it already, start blessing your children. God says in Numbers that we are a priest, and he said, I told you in 1 Peter that you are a priest. Everybody say, I am a priest. Amen. So you are part, according to 1 Timothy, I mean 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, but you are a chosen generation or an elect race, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness 
into marvelous light or into his marvelous light. So there's power in a blessing. The patriarchs knew this. This is the men that were in the, the Bible. We call men like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the 12 tribes of Israel. We call them patriarchs. In Genesis, uh, well, Hebrews eleven twenty says, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, Esau concerning things to come. Now Esau and Jacob were twin boys, but Esau was the firstborn. And so Esau really deserved the main blessing of the firstborn. But God had already prophetically said that the firstborn would would be the one that would be uh, uh, secondary to his younger brother, that the younger brother would get the main blessing. And so the younger brother was who? Jacob. Uh, but God knew that one day the firstborn, the son of God, would be the firstborn among many. It would be Jesus Christ himself. He was pointing to a time that Jesus would lay his life down and give his blessing to someone else. Aren't you glad? That's how you got saved. If Jesus had not laid down his life a ransom for many, you could not have been saved. You are saved today on the blessing that God took from Jesus and gave it to you. Amen? After Jesus was raised from the dead, God exalted him. The reason that the firstborn gets a double blessing in the history of mankind is so that God could bless others through him. The oldest was supposed to give to people, but God had already said that Esau would be passed over by Jacob. That's why he gave Jacob and Jacob's mother, Rebekah, the wisdom supernaturally to get the blessing from Esau. You say, well, that was not faithful. God is God. And God can do whatever he wants to do. So at this time, uh, he, it says in Genesis, Genesis 25, 23, And the Lord said unto her, this is Rebekah, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Look, there's no way to get around the fact that God meant to bless Jacob, even though he was uh, the second son. In Genesis 27, 33, Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Once that blessing was spoken by Jacob. He could not take it back. You don't take back blessings. Amen? That this, that's a statute in the word of God. And then Esau come in and he wanted to, him to be blessed. But uh, the, it, he, the firstborn blessing had already been given. And then Jesus Christ is sort of a follow-up of that. God said about him, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Uh, Hebrews eleven twenty one. by faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of the, 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 his staff. Now see, this goes on down to a time when Jacob is in uh, the land of uh, Goshen in in Egypt, and so what he told the tribes, the men, you got to bring the head of each tribe, and I will bless them. Well, if you study the tribes of Israel, uh, you know that the Levites do not have a portion of land. They have the land that is around the tabernacle because they minister at the tabernacle. And so Levites do not have land. So the other, the other children of Jacob were given a portion of the land. And because the Levites don't have the land, God said, I'm going to give Joseph's portion to his two sons. Their names were Manasseh and Ephraim. 
And so when it came time to bless those boys, Joseph brought them in to his dad. And, and he was blind or old. And, and so he took his, his hands. And what he did, he had Manasseh here and Ephraim here. So when they got there to bless him, this is what he did. He crossed his hands over and he put his hand on the younger. So that was Joseph's son, Ephraim. But Manasseh was supposed to get the blessing. So, but God wants us, we're in a different time and a different place. He wants us to bless our, our children and our children's children because the power of God is working through the blessing. You know, uh, bless, most of the time people in America, they just think it's something you say when you sneeze. You know, bless you. And, and that's not it. This, this blessing entangles a lot. And, and it's, uh, I wanted to give you a, a scripture for what is a blessing because scriptures think it's, uh, Christians think it's something like manipulation or let's make a deal. And we can't make a deal with God. He blesses you because he is sovereign. He is God. He is good. He is faithful. He is merciful. He is just. He is compassionate. And he, God, wants to bless you above your abilities to contain it. How many of you want a blessing like that? Amen. It's because he is your heavenly father. He wants to bless you, but not because you're making a deal with him. There was this little uh, Catholic boy that he was wanting a bicycle really, really bad. And so he went to the nun and he said, I want to make a deal with God to get me a bicycle. And, and the nun said, well, uh, pray and tell God you'll be good for six weeks. And so the boy knelt down and he said, God, if you'll get me that bicycle, I'll be good for six weeks. Then he said, scratch that, God. I can't be good for six weeks. He said, God, make it four. <laughs> and, and then he said, God, I can't even be good for four weeks. Scratch that, God. I'll be good for two weeks. And, and then he looked over and he saw a statue of Mary wrapped up in a sheet. And he said, God, if you ever want to see your mama alive again, you better give me a bicycle. <laughs> so God is not in a let's make a deal business. He blesses you because he is sovereign and he wants you to be blessed. I was born in 1940, so y'all can tell I'll be older this year. Uh, <laughs> But back in those days, as I was growing up in the church, uh, you know, God was not good. If we heard preaching, if we had a revival, uh, I would go home at night and cover up my head like Wesley because I would think God was going to zap me that night because I was an eight-year-old sinner, you know. And, and I looked at God as a, a man with a long beard. You know, you... you Picture how God up on a throne with this thing in his hand. If you do enough wrong, he'll just zap you right on the spot. Well, folks, listen, Oral Roberts came along in 1940, in the 40s, and he said God is a good God. He wrote books about how good, good God was and how that if you served him, he had blessings galore for you. He said he was going to heal you. But see, the churches they had almost always had God sitting there with a billy stick waiting to hit you. But God, ha he w wants to bless you because he is a good God. Amen. Uh, what is the blessing and how do I qualify? What is the history of the blessing? What are the contents of the blessing? What are the hindrances of the blessing? And how is the blessing released into your own individual life? Now, the Bible gives this ironic blessing in the book of Numbers, which I have told you about. 
But the blessing, the what is the blessing? The, the blessing is the impartation of the supernatural power of God into a human life spoken by the word of God's delegated authority. Now, what do we mean by delegated? God is God. Jesus is, un, is equal with God. And then Jesus said in the household, he, he would put the man in charge of the house. That's not to rule over the house. That is to take care of the household. Amen. But God told Aaron for him to go and to speak a blessing over Israel. Now, Aaron was the high priest, so he was in the authoritative position of the high priest. And then we go back to Adam and Eve where God blessed them. And then Abraham said in, uh, or in Genesis 12, 3, God said to Abraham, I will bless you and bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. How many of you know that the blessing of Abraham is still upon the church? Because the Bible says that we are Abraham's seed. That's uh, Jesus always blessed children. Jesus was a rabbi. And so he had the authority to bless the children. And it is God's will to bless you through the ones that are in authority over you. The shalom of God. He wants us to have peace, blessings, health, relationships, fertility, abundance, and prosperity in your soul and have success in your life. 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. The book of Proverbs says, The blessing of, of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. You don't want to be rich and have sorrow. You want to be rich and have the, the gift of God over you. Uh, I know it's so important for uh, Christians to speak to their children. I told Erica last night that her girls could not help but be beautiful. Because from the day that Erica looked down and saw Abby, she said, you are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. Every time they get a, a new dress on or they get ready to go to school and they go out the door, Erica's saying, you are so beautiful. And you are so smart. And so the blessings that Erica wants on those children, she is saying it with her mouth. Now, that's what we need to do is... Uh, to say a blessing. You don't think a blessing, you say a blessing. Uh, thinking is like mind control, but speaking releases the power of God, and dead gods can't speak. When God speaks, his voice splits the cedars. He speaks and creates something out of nothing, and out of, uh, out of dirt comes a living soul. Amen? Now, uh, Jesus said, when you open your mouth and speak over you ch your children, you speak what I speak. Once a blessing is spoken, it won't be withdrawn. God could stop it because of your disobedience, but no man can. No man can stop that blessing. We t said a while ago, he said, we're the salt of the earth. Uh, you know, if the the, Jesus called those 12 disciples and he told them, you're the light of the world and you're the salt of the earth. But how many of you know that they had character defects like all of us? And it, if Jesus had used the Jerusalem Consulting Agency, they would have sent back and said, uh, thanks, Jesus, for submitting those resumes of those men you, you got to wrote run your worldwide organization. But after checking them out, we find that St. Peter is schizophrenic. He has fits of temper. He's capable of murder under pressure. And then there's Andrew. He has no leadership at all. He just, his personality is evoked out of Peter. He don't really have those leadership qualities. And then they said, and James and John they're so ego-centered, they'll want to rule and reign after you die. And then he said, 
Thomas is riddled with self-doubt. He doesn't know who you are and he doesn't know who he is. And then they said, and, and, and that Matthew, he is an IRS collector, but not always honest. And I think he should be banned out of that job by the Better Business Bureau. <laughs> so you see, those guys, they didn't have all of the things they needed. But how many of you know that Jesus' blessing over those men was greater than anything else. What he spoke over them came to pass and everyone gave their lives for the Lord except for uh, the uh, Apostle John. But see, that's what you say over your children. And it's not a blessing coming from Donald Trump or Sam Walton or somebody that. God put his blessing on the blessing. Amen? So I wanted us uh, uh, to just do something this morning a little bit different. And uh, I just want to share a little story. Uh, and, but I didn't finish my sermon, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> but, but I want to tell you a little story out of the Bible. Uh, you know, uh, in America, we've had a tendency uh, to just think that the men are the leaders. Now, I, I'm not part of this feminist movement, but I'm going to tell you what the Word of God said. In, in the book of Numbers, uh, this man's name was Zelophehad, and he had, he had five daughters, and he had no sons. And so his daughter's names were Mela, which means sick or infirm, Noah, which means movement, Milka, which means queen, Terza, which means pleasing, and Hagla, which means dancing or in a house of partridges. So their, their names meant something. But uh, as the children of Israel were fixing to move over into the, the land of Canaan, these five girls were living together because their daddy died. And... Uh, and so they got to talking amongst themselves, and they said, look, we're not going to have an inheritance when we move over into Canaan land because it's just the men. It's just the, the men that have the blessing, that have the inheritance. And, and so they said, what we got to do, we got to get together and go see the main man who was Moses. And so this story is told five times in the Bible. So because it's told that many times, you can say it's accurate and true, right? Uh, and anyway, they went down to where Moses was at, at the gate of the, the leaders of, and, and you know, the men want to say, what, what are these girls coming for? They're not even supposed to come see us unless we give them permission because women are subservient to men. Well, but they went on to Moses and and they said, Moses, we want to tell you something and ask you something. And they said, our father died in the wilderness, not because of rebellion, he just died. And so, Lord, we know that we're, or Moses, we know that we're just about ready to go over into the promised land, and we're not going to have a place to live because our father's dead, and we're not going to have an inheritance. And they said, we want you to give us the same inheritance you would give if there was five boys, that you would give them an inheritance. And so Moses said, this is a hard thing. I'm going to have to go in and talk to the big cheese and see what he says about it. And so he went in to the tabernacle because Moses could go in there and talk face to face with God. And he said, uh, Lord, these girls have presented me with a problem and I don't know what to do about it. And God said, give them the inheritance. It belongs to them. And then you go on over, and, and Caleb did the same thing for his daughter. And then after Job was tempted, he, the Bible says that he had five daughters, that they were the most beautiful in the whole land, and he gave them the same inheritance that he gave his sons. So ladies, if you are here, I want you to know that you are a blessing of God and you can do anything in Him that you want to do. You, you can speak, 
You can preach, Miss Vivian. There's nothing wrong with it. But in the way God has things lined up, whoever is the authority blesses the children. If you're a single mom here, you no longer have a, a husband, you need to do the same thing that these men are, are instructed to do because God says in him there's neither male nor female. There's ne neither Jew nor Greek because he did more to set women free than anybody else in the whole world has done. Jesus wants us to be free and free indeed. So what I want you to do, if you have any children here today, I want them to come and stand in front of you and we're, we're going to say a blessing. Somebody puts their hands on everybody, okay? We, we can just do it that way instead of trying to find the children. But at home, you put your hands on your children. Just touch somebody and stand up. Stand up and touch somebody. If you will put that blessing back up there, Rhonda. It's uh, number six, verse 24 through 27. Everybody touch somebody because we're going to bless everybody. You're going to go out of here today being blessed whether you are male or female. Okay? Let, I'll say the word and then you say it. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. And be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. And give thee peace. And I put the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on the one that I'm touching. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, Mom, Mom told the story of Erica. Um, saying to her, her daughters, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. And the only story that I can remember of you speaking over us is one time me and Byron were together and uh, you looked at Byron and you said, Byron, don't be ugly. And I said, Mama, he can't help it. That's, that, was, <laughs> that was the only time I, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but take that verse in Numbers and speak that verse. If you don't speak it over your children, then speak it over someone else. The Lord bless and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. The Lord put his countenance upon you and give you peace. And you go in the name of the Lord. So, Father, we thank you today for the blessing. We thank you for giving us this word. We thank you for, Lord, giving us this word that will never return void. So, Lord, today we bless those that are around us. We speak life to them. Lord, we know that life and death comes in our tongue. And so today, Lord, we choose, we make a choice to speak life over those that are around us. Father, bless our children and our children's children and draw them in in the name of Jesus. And everybody said together, amen. Vacation Bible School volunteers, we need to meet with you just for a few minutes. Roxanne has asked that all of you that have signed up to help Vacation Bible School meet back in the foyer between the two buildings for just a moment. See ya.